Presbyterians, it's my pleasure to bring to you uh, Joel Jacobs. Um, Joel grew up in a small town of Huntsville, Ohio, and received a diploma from Indian Lake High School. Following his high school, Joel attended Rhodes State College, receiving a degree in business. For the last 15 years, Joel has been in the wastewater field, att attaining a Class Three professional certification from the Ohio EPA, and has ran four separate wastewater facilities, not including Hicksville. In April 2022, Joel married Stacy Manns, who is from Paulding, and they currently reside in Payne, Ohio. In his spare time, Joel enjoys billiards as well as golf. And, uh, Joel came to, we were interviewing here a couple of years ago and had the opportunity to uh, meet with Joel and uh, bring him to Hicksville to manage our wastewater treatment plant. He's doing a wonderful job. He's switching over a lot of things. He's got a lot of background information and, um, you know, updates and different things like that. I know in Hicksville right now, we're doing a lot of sanitary separations and this is somebody we want on our team to work with us in preparing for the future of Hicksville and uh, stormwater and wastewater treatment. So please welcome Joel. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I appreciate Mike having me come today. I could talk to you guys about the village. Um, a little bit, I have gotten to know the village, have enjoyed it. It's actually a nice little town. I've worked for a couple in the past, and this is among the best, I'll say. Um, just, uh, we'll start off just a little bit about the collection system. Um, here in town we have right around 25 miles of sanitary and storm combined. Um, as Mike did mention, uh, we are working uh, as best as we can to separate the storm and sanitary. Uh, for years they've allowed it, um, not so much nowadays with the combined sewers because with that happening you treat not only the rainwater but your sanitary and it is not really uh, it's not really really well managed so we're trying to eliminate that as much as possible uh, get down to uh, what we can treat in the plant just uh, by our sanitary um, system um, but uh, other than the 25 miles we have seven lift stations here in town um, we're slowly just updating them getting them back into shape where they should be. Uh, we do have some deterioration at some of those lift stations. Uh, I haven't even been here, actually April next month. It'll be a year. Um, we're going to uh, be working on at least one, uh, redoing some of it. Um, there are several more that's slated to be fixed um, over the coming years. Of course, we can't do it all at once because of budgetary issues, but we're planning on doing that. Um, so that one would be Haber, our Haber lift station. Um, we're going to be working on. Um, other than that, flow comes to the plant um, several different ways, you know. And let's see here. We have uh, our average daily flow based on the plant is 950,000 gallons. Uh, our peak flow is 2.2 million. Uh, so far this year, our average daily flow is right, about, right around 1.3, 1.4 million coming into the plant. We've been very wet, very wet. Um, last year we had <coughs> right around 900, um, and which isn't too bad, very manageable. Um, but uh, so far it's been very wet. I'm just hoping and praying that the rain will go away. So uh, we can go from an instant uh, one day from 500,000 gallons all the way up to one and a half million, and just like that, because of the combined sewers. So, through our long-term control plan and the EPA, um, we are working on diligently separating that. Our next project would be Maple Lane, that's slated to start here soon. Um, and, and by 2025, we'll be redoing the Defiance lift station uh, towards the northeast town, side of town. So, um, that would be completely redone. So we eliminate one of our CSL locations. We have three current that we're trying to eliminate, as well as any downspouts, tie-ins that um, the public would have tied into our sanitary. Um, we'll work with them, you know, work with anybody that's willing to work with us. So, and uh, if there's any help I can give, anybody's willing to reach out to the wastewater plant, I can help them out. But um, from, from the plant side of things, Flow comes into the plant. We have a fine screen system 
that removes any inorganic materials anything that's not organic can't be broken down we remove so from that it's filtered and goes into our oxidation ditches our oxidation ditches uh, supply detention time as well as oxygen to help break down organic matter um, so from there we take it to uh, clarification so what clarification does is after that biological material has broken down settles out and our clear water goes over the top it is then disinfected and sent back to Mill Creek and from Mill Creek it eventually goes into the Maumee River so which eventually supplies water to Defiance <laughs> as well as I'm, I'm sure multiple other communities down the road so um, also we accept septage from all over the county um, so anybody who has a, uh, a septage tank out in the country whatever um, Dave Graver he he works around the county he brings us septage that's another source of income we do have um, septage station was not working when I came uh, we have that back up and running uh, it adds it like I said it adds additional income to the village um, but based on our loadings we can only allow so much into the plant before we get overloaded so but that hasn't been an issue um, but it is a source of income um, let me see here so at the end product, we do have uh, biosolids. So for every one pound of CBOD or organic matter that comes in, we do have to remove it to create a balance in the plant. So that is a long, long-term problem we might have to solve. Um, um, every plant in Ohio uh, deals with getting rid of your biosolids. So long-term, uh, we need to either find the farmers or send it to a to grab all the waste for the landfill. But that's what we're working on now. It's cold. It's hard to dewater the material um, during the uh, cold season. So um, this coming year, we're we're looking to work with the local farmers, try to get rid of it that way, um, and try to lean away from the landfill. So, um, but in a nutshell, that's what I do. So. Anybody have any questions? The biosolids, if you give that to a farmer, does he have to inject that or can he just spread it out on top? He can do it several different ways. He can either inject it, knife it in, or yes, he can put it on top of the fields. So, uh, but we're only allowed during uh, certain times of the year um, just because of runoff. Well, that's why I so, wondered if he didn't have to put it. Yeah, in. yeah. So, once the ground isn't frozen, you can apply it, but only to certain ground, grounds uh, like hay fields, stuff like that, wheat fields. Uh, something not actively growing, like uh, let's just say corn or anything like that. You want to keep it off that. Could you mix that in with the chicken manure plant? If you, would that be a positive thing or not? We, we cannot do that. Okay. So um, land application is highly regulated through the EPA. So we can only give so much to so many so much farmers we have to do agronomic rates to make sure they don't overload their fields as well um, uh, just uh, that they can decide what they want to do with it. either take liquid or take the cake that we produce at our plant so that has lime in it the cake does not does we not. do not add lime so yeah would that be a is it a solid form if it goes to the farmer Yes. And they would have to liquefy it if they want to, or put it on in a solid uh, manure spreader, I suppose. Yeah. Is the nutrient value, is there much nutrients at that point after it's been through everything else? Yes, yes. So still you have your phosphorus, you have your nitrates. Um, those are great for the soil. You right. still have that retained in the solids. So it still has great uh, nutritional value to the fields and to the farm ground. Is that something that you can sell? No. We have uh, Class B um, solids. We cannot sell it to the community. Uh, it has to be a Class A in order to sell it to the community. It costs millions to uh, produce Class A. And being a community as small as what we are, we, it just, it's too bad, but we can't do that. So. Second question is you say there's 25 miles of street to separate now, or that's how much we have in the, in the village of Hicksville? In total between our storm and sanitary. Yes. How much have we done so far? Like Smith Street, I know, has been separated. Yes. You know, 
So out of the 25 miles, how many miles do you think we have to get any idea? It's a hard guesstimate. Like, I'm, since I'm so new, we're still, I'm right. still learning what has been separated. Um, we have been uh, quite busy trying to get everything updated, but uh, I would say um, with Maple, and like you, you had mentioned that, it's, it's hard to guesstimate. It really is because you have unknown lines that we don't even know, know about that right. could be tied in. So the idea that percentage-wise, I really couldn't give you a number. Third question is when the water, when you're done treating it, is that water, you said goes into Mill Creek, that's the creek right next door to the? Yes. All right. Yeah, right next to We actually start the creek. So oh. uh, we start the creek there yeah, at the plant. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. yeah. Can you drink that water? No. <laughs> yeah, you can. You're right. Right. Not, I mean, probably not I right mean, I probably could. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to be able to drink it though, right? Isn't it supposed to be potable? We'll say it again. When it comes out of there, isn't it technically supposed to be drinkable? No. Okay. No, it is not. It's We have regulations from the EPA we have to meet our NPDES permit, our limits, and we're, what we discharge on a regular basis is well below what we're regulated um, on our effluent limits. So I wish, if, if I had it in front of me, I'd be able to list it off to you. Um, suspended solids is in the high teens, which we're limited to, if not 20s in the milligrams per liter, we're down into the single digits, usually six, seven or below. So we're still well below that, even CBOD, like CBOD, is uh, uh, carbonaceous bi biochemical oxygen demand. It's that the actual organics in the wastewater that the microorganisms thrive on. So we might have 200 milligrams per liter. We have three or three or four going out the end of the plant. So we clean it up substantially before it's discharged. I know so. my brother can tell you that you can live through that if you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, there are painful process. Say, so <laughs> it's a painful process. <laughs> so I'm sure there is. Uh, there, we do have UV disinfection. Uh, so after it's gone through uh, the uh, its its process, UV disinfection will then uh, kill the E. coli. So you really don't have to worry about E. coli, but at the same time, there's just other unknowns we don't know. So, and that's why when the, uh, let's just say, the water plant down the road picks it up off of, let's say, Maumee River, they further the process. Right. So in its raw form, it's not wise to drink it, but down down the road, I told you. you can. So, <laughs> so. What's the capacity? You said the flow range is you know, half a million to a million and a half, but how much capacity is there for larger? You mean through the plant? Yeah. So uh, we've seen uh, two to three million in a day since I've been here. Uh, our peak flow is supposed to be 2.2. Um, from everything I've seen since I've been here, we can still treat it effectively above two million. Is there enough capacity if the town were to increase in size with more households and, and so forth? How, what, what kind of capacity would you say is available? Um, to stress it out like that, uh, it's, it's hard to say because uh, each each is based on per capita how much can discharge to our uh, plant. Now, it was based uh, back in 2006. It was based on that population. So, uh, if we keep adding, we'd have to reevaluate the actual oxidation ditches. So our loadings into the plant. But right now, we can treat everything that's here and more. But to say how much, I'd have to go back and do a few calculations. So. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, we had somebody here from from uh, sewage, mm -hmm. and I asked them how much rainfall before they have to dump, you know, dump raw sewage. And I was thinking it'd probably be around two inches, three inches. And he told me a quarter inch of rainfall, and they're going to get flooded out there. Yeah, is it's that still where where it's at? It just to see. There's a difference between. Let's just say a hard, fast rain and a steady rain all day. So, with it being a combined sewer, um, any 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 storm grade, anything that picks up, it collects it immediately. That's why it hits the plant so hard, so quick. Um, so it, it doesn't really 
at the rate, like like a so slow, steady like mist or slow, steady rain, um, you will eventually see it within, let's say, three hours, maybe, maybe a little bit less. A hard rain, you're going to be hit immediately because all that storm sewer goes straight to the plant. Now, given there is separation, which has helped, but it goes immediately to the plant. That's why that quarter inch can make huge difference on what comes into the plant. So, but yes, and if it's peaks above, um, let's see, about 16 to 1800 gallons per minute, uh, which would be calculated out above, uh, I can't with that calculator, I'd have to calculate it out, but we would be discharging our RCSO location. Can you get fined by the EPA if you dump the raw food or not? No, we have to monitor it constantly. Right, yeah, okay. So we have, CSO locations number three, number four, and number six throughout the town. Um, um, every time it rains and we can see the rate come up at the plant, we monitor three and six, then we go out and monitor the other one. So as long as uh, basically the fine slow station keeps up with the un uh, incoming rain flow, uh, we don't have really have to worry about it going out our uh, 004 location. But it's the rain is substantially. It really does affect how much and when we do discharge out our CSO. And most all of it is like it's all diluted at that point. It's not purely raw sewage. It's been diluted by I mean, millions of gallons. Yeah, millions of gallons. Yeah. So I've seen it as low as roughly 450,000 gallons on a very dry day, and the next hour if it downpours a quarter of an inch, you'd see, you can see 1.6, 1.8, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 16 to 1800 gallons per minute coming through the plant. That's over 2 million gallons at an instant. So, Do you see rates going up for the town? Do people pay for their sewage or not? Uh, I have, I do not know. I don't, I don't know anything That's about that. That's a town council question. <laughs> That's a town council question, yes. So do you spend most of your time there, or are you able to get around quite a bit and be involved with the sewer systems in the town? Yeah, I'm, I'm directly uh, responsible for the collection system, so I'm out in it almost every single day. Um, we monitor lift stations every day. We check them every day. Uh, we have a maintenance schedule. We go around and check them. Um, I'm looking to do even more work out in the collection system this year. Um, we are working with uh, uh, Luke and I. Luke works underneath me, but Luke has done a great job. We We've kind of tag teamed, you know, worked out there. Tried to work with the other guys with the with the village. They've done a great job as well, helping us out. Um, and uh, we plan on doing more cleanings in the town with the with the lines and do more flow monitoring in the future um, to ch help try and isolate those areas that we might see that uh, more flow coming from. So, do you jet pump any areas regularly? Not yet. Yeah. That, that's that's in the works right now. Yeah. Right now, it's on an as-needed basis. Um, being a small community like we are, it's it's hard to diversify the time. But we are doing that, especially when we're uh, we're very busy. But we are making the time. We are scheduling that out. So, like our, our lift station, for example, that's going to be on a quarterly basis where we clean those. So, and then same way with the uh, with the lines here in town. And we're just going to have to fix amounts of time during the year to go out and do regular cleanings. So, we didn't know sure it could be that interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, any of you are welcome down at the plant. Um, uh, just give us a call. I can get more interesting. I can give you a tour. <laughs> so it's, it, it's not as bad as what you normally think. So, and I, I, I will say one of the biggest challenges we have now um, would be um, the amount of rags, uh, sanitary wipes uh, that we get down the sewer. Sanitary wipes, they sometimes say flushable on them, don't flush them. So, I'm sad because they don't break down. And since I've been here, we pulled our Defiance uh, station pumps between 50 and 100 times because of them. So, we're trying to advocate um, just throw it in the trash can. You know, it helps us out. And each one of those pumps uh, costs anywhere from our smallest pump, two thousand, all the way up to ten thousand dollars. So we don't catch it right away. There's ten thousand dollars out of the, our pocket. You know. So. 
I was just going to ask about uh, the stuff that you're supposedly is disposable. Yeah. I don't know. If it's not toilet paper, yeah, <clears throat> don't put it down. Don't put it down. So that that even equates to feminine 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 products as well. It's plastic. It doesn't break down. And not all all the time that can uh, can that process through a pump gets wind wound up, gets caught in between an impeller, creates heat. And if uh, let's just say a heat sensor fails in the pump, ruins the pump. So. Thanks, Michael, for arranging that program. Very interesting. Uh, next week, Bob Weatherhead's coming to talk about the All-Star Bob Weatherhead and Johnny Davis with the Special Olympics basketball. Okay. Anybody else have anything else?